Hey, what's going on Machine Masters? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining us today on this channel. Today I'll be taking a look at Studio One version four and showing you a very important tip to help you for one of the final stages in creating with Studio One and that's how to export stems from it. There's a couple of ways to do it and there's a couple of reasons why you would want to do so. So the most common one of course is just to save a simple Waver MP3 so you can do mastering or upload it to SoundCloud or your beat selling profile. Another one of course is something I'm sure you're probably eager to do is to set up sessions so you record another artist. So I'm gonna show you how to set up your stems or how I would set them up for you to have a smooth workflow, whether you're doing track outs because you sold a beat or whether you're doing like a pre-master of your own stuff, which is what I commonly do. So first thing you wanna do is take a look at this track. There's quite a few different VST instruments going on here. And the only thing that I really wanna pay attention to is my naming conventions. So when you're creating the beat, you kind of get willy nilly with colors and track names. But as soon as possible, go back and rename everything. And since I'm exporting this to import it in a different program, I'm gonna go ahead and use a naming convention that makes sense to me. So what I like to do is do like key and then underscores. And in this case, this is a piano. So let me play through this a little bit so you can hear what I'm doing so the naming will make sense. Right, real simple intro type beat, a beat for anything really. I mean, I can double it up and triple it up and make it a beat for sale, but more than anything, I'm gonna archive it, but I wanna add some extra touches to it in a different program with a different set of tools. So I'm go through and name these real quick. So this first piano is really more like an EP. And you want these names so when you drag and drop them into the other program where you send it to an engineer, more importantly, they can understand what you're doing. So I got key EP, key piano, key lead. This one's a lead as well. I'll call it a whistle instead. Drums we'll deal with in a second. And then I got two bass tracks. So for this one, we can do bass, sub. These are like bending subs. And this one's bass 808. Now the only thing I gotta worry about now is the drums. The drums is a little bit trickier depending on how you wanna do it. So in this particular beat, the only thing that I'm worrying about is gonna be the kick and the snare because you wanna use your kick to side chain the bass. You might end up doing that in another program. So let's see which one's my kick. So that's my kick. I wanna send that out to its own channel, a channel two. And then my main clap, I wanna send that out to its own channel, channel three. So right here at the top of any multi-out instrument, contact, Atlas, battery, whatever you're using, you can enable these tracks and then they'll show up in your mixer and they'll be default, they'll be black. So those are my drums. We can treat that like a bus. That'll be my kick and that'll be my clap. So everything's ready to be exported out. So the first way to do it, of course, is to go to song, export stems, and you have channel mode, and then you have track mode. The difference is track mode is literally the VST inserts, as you'll see drums is by itself. Channel mode is dealing with your mixer, so it includes the kick and the clap bus that I um, used. So I would use it for that. And then once you have that set up, depending on which way you wanna do it, if you have multiple outs, you can use channels, then you set your location, do your file um, name prefix, and this is gonna go before the key underscore bass underscore. So in that kind of sense, I'd probably make the name really short. So if I named this track something like uh, Club Beat, I'd probably use um, an acronym like CB. Or I might include the tempo. I might be CB130. But before I do that, I might just do this differently. I might just um, export the buses, right? Since I have multiple sounds and multiple bass tracks, especially. So we have this, this. So I'll take all my keys. So I have EP, piano, lead, and a whistle. Highlight all of them using the shift key and left click. So I'm gonna click on the first one, hold shift, click on the last one, right click, bus selected channels, and I do bus keys. Now I can go to the drums, including the kick and the clap. Right click, bus selected track, bus drums, and then my sub, same story. I'm using two different 808s. You might have a different bass line halfway in. You might have like a DJ Mustard bass on your bridge or something. There's multiple types of tracks you'd have more than one bass line. Add selected to a bus, bus bass. So cool, we're good. So 
So now we have the buses too. So now when I go back to song, export stems, when I'm looking at channels, I also have buses. So I have the individual sounds and the buses. Uncheck anything that you're not using in the track itself. So I just got my keys, I just got my drums, and I got my bus tracks. So I'm gonna go to my desktop, I'm gonna create a new folder. So that's, the folder is gonna be what the track is. It's called Club, it's 130 beats per minute, it's in B flat major. So I'm gonna create that folder, that's where everything is gonna go. Then on a file prefix, like I said, I can do CB130, if that's what you wanna do, or whatever you wanna name it. The shorter the better, because your next program is gonna read that across the waveform. You could change the resolution if you wish. I'm using 48, which is more for video and film. And then you could do between song start and end marker or between loop. Since I was looping this, I'm gonna do it between loop. But other than that, we're done. Import to track means it's gonna come back into Studio One. And sometimes you'll do that. Like if you wanna bounce all your VSCs to audio so you can save on your CPU usage, you can actually do that and then finish mixing the track. I'm gonna to go to a different DAW. So I'm gonna hit okay. And it goes straight across like you're just rendering one file, but it actually creates multiple files. So there's really no speed difference. And boom, here we go. We have our bass. If I hit spacebar, it'll play on Mac. But then also I have my buses, which is both bass lines, or in this case, we'll do drums. So these are all my stems. And technically these are files you wanna back up forever. Studio One project files, they can come and go. The versions will change in five years. You might switch it off. But if you can get in the habit of exporting these, stemmed out, sound by sound, VST by VST, bus by bus, you see the file sizes aren't too crazy. You right click, and then of course you can compress them. And then this archive is what you would keep with you forever. And what is the file size? It's 40 megabytes per project, give or take, right? Depending on how long these sessions are. I would back these up and just put them on your cloud or something. Because if anything happens, <laughs> As we all know, that archive could save your life. Because even with your instrument parts, let's say you don't have that VST no more. Cool, you got it. It might not have the MIDI data or the automation data, but with the tools we have now, you could right click on your EP and convert it back to MIDI, right? Because it's separated from everything else. All these are clean, so you can convert them to MIDI in most new modern DAWs. So keep this archive. That's one way to use it. It's to archive everything, have everything uh, separated. And also, if you get into selling sample packs or you get into sharing packs with your friends. This is These are the files you'd be giving people. So I'm going ahead and close this project. I'm going to save it. Now my desk is Club 130 B flat. I'm going to Harrison Mix Bus real quick. So in Harrison, I'm going to call this Club Mix 130 B flat. Now once you're in your DAW of choice, whether it be Logic, Pro Tools, whatever, first thing you do, of course, is set your tempo to match your folder or your project. So this will be 130. This way the grid lines up automatically. And now you have options, right? Because you technically can bring like, let's say, the drums in individually. And you can work with that, especially if you stem them out like kick, hi-hat, snare, clap. But because you have control of your buses, you don't need to drag everything in. We can just bring the buses in and just import three tracks. Cool. And then, of course, you can use the scissor tool, copy, paste. I can extend this out until full beat if I need to. So if someone hits me up and is like, yo, you still got that beat and I forgot the session, I can just bring in the bus stems and chop it up and extend it real quick and use crossfades and stuff and be done with it. So you don't have to go back and open the beat, wait for all the plugins to load. You can just do it with the three bus files. And then, of course, with the Harrison Mix Bus thing, each of these buses could become a bus track. And then I take advantage of the analog sound modeling of this particular DAW. That'd be the only reason why I personally complete this step because I use the bus mixing in this program and the EQ and the filtering and how it particularly sounds, get more of an analog feel on the track when it's done. Um, nothing wrong with the way Studio One sounds, but Harrison's like, it's like rough level. But anyway, so hopefully you guys learned a thing or two from that particular workflow. This particular tip does transcend Studio One. I'm just showing you how to do it in Studio One. And of course, it has multiple purposes for your friends, engineers that have Pro Tools. That's what you want to deliver to them. For the people who are buying exclusives and they want track outs, you can deliver those to them. <laughs> I used to be funny. I used to just send them to buses. Like what you need to figure out what my snare is for. Y'all don't know how to mix better than me. <laughs> Seriously though. When you guys be <laughs> doing those premium leases for forty dollars, yeah, you're getting the buzzes, buddy. You're not you're not getting my little John clock. <laughs> not today at least. You don't have to cut that out by yourself. But anyway, all jokes aside, I'm MG the Future. Um, if you guys want to get in contact with us, definitely follow us on social media. I'm at MG the Future on Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to follow at Machine Masters as well. Until next time, guys. Peace. Mm -hmm.